previously on the Youth Edition. It's a loss on the final day of the season, but we are through to the championship. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Youth Edition. It's Oldham Athletic, it's Dylan Allen on a quest for Champions League glory. It's time to sit back, relax and get in that comfy chair, put it on the big screen TV, crack your favourite beverage, because here we go with the Youth Edition. Hello and welcome back to the Youth Edition career mode here. FIFA 19, season number four. Here we go. We've made it into the championship. And, uh, well, I think we're up for another tough season. We'll check in our board objectives and all that kind of good stuff very, very shortly. But let's have a look at some of the teams here. Um, you know, we've got the likes of Aston Villa, Birmingham City, uh, Burnley are down here in the championship at the moment. So, I mean, there's some strong sides that will push for uh, the Premier League. I'm not sure what our objectives are, not sure what state these teams are in, but we will go and jump across into the, uh, the team sheets so we can have a look at you know, where we sit competitively. All right, so we jump in here. You can do this by going into your team sheet, uh, add a new team sheet, and then import one from another club. And you can get to this screen here. So uh, we've got ourselves here, Oldham. We're a, a three and a half star team. Uh, that is obviously our, our first team squad. Um, but you know, that's not too shabby here for the championship. And we'll get a look at, at some of the other teams as we go through. But let's just have a quick look at our squad. We've also got Klein and Barros there at 77. Guerin's at a 76 along with Edwards. Um, Coe's the lowest there at 69, but he plays better than that anyway. We've still got Cooper there. The transfer window is open. We'll have to wait and see what kind of business gets done. Uh, if some big clubs come into play for some of our players, they may see themselves uh, moved out. I want to try and generate some cash. I've got my eye on a couple of players. Um, We'll take a look at that shortly. But let's have a look at what we're dealing with here in the championship. Portsmouth have come up with us. Um, they're only a two and a half star team, but they did beat us in the final game of the season. They've only got a couple of players there over 74 and a 59 right back in their starting lineup. But, you know, they might have better players on the bench. Preston North End, three and a half star, the same as us. Um, some low defenders, but their midfield looks fairly solid. A 72 rated keeper. Reading. Uh, pretty much on the same boat as us as well, three and a half stars. So we're, we're in here for, for a decent competition, you'd feel. Uh, Moore there at 79. He's a big solid defender by the looks of things. Sheffield United are only a three star team, so we've got a better rating than those. They look like they've got a pretty solid back line, but maybe their strike force and their keeper there looking a little bit dodgy. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday as well, another three and a half star team. Uh, an 81 out on the wing. We might have to be worried about that. Uh, Stoke are down here in the championship. They look like a decent side, except they've got a, an average keeper. Um, but they'll definitely be attacking and may cause our defense a bit of an issue. Sunderland are down here as well. Um, 76 there in the midfield. The back line's a bit, a bit dodgy. Uh, Swansea City, okay, that looks like a team. Once again, it's the back lines. It's probably why these teams are struggling and why they haven't made a push to the Premier League. But uh, that forward zone there for Swansea. We'll have to be careful on that one. West Brom, that's a three and a half star team, but they look fairly solid. Uh, only the centre back there at 69, a 77 rated keeper. Wigan, three and a half stars as well, 65 rated keeper. Uh, Aston Villa, okay, they've got Grealish in there at 81, but you know, a little bit hit and miss. We'll see what they're all about. Birmingham City are only a three star team. Okay, they've dropped away a little bit. Blackburn Rovers at three stars as well. Uh, Brentford, three and a half stars. 74 rated keeper. 78 there in Watkins out on the wing. Bristol City are three and a half as well. So, I mean, we should be in and about the mix for mid-table at least, you'd feel, if we, if we get some good results and, and get some good players in through the transfer window. Burnley, four stars. These guys are probably my pick uh, for going up. Klosterman there at left back at an 80. They've still got Joe Hart between the sticks. Um, Cork's in there. Okay, th that's my pick here for, for the top. Charlton have come up. They're only a two-star team. How the fuck did they even push their way through? I have no idea. Derby County, three and a half stars, respectively. Ipswich are a three-star team. Leeds are three and a half star. They'll probably be uh, quite competitive as well. Middlesbrough are three and a half stars. 
once again, a bit of a dodgy back line. Millwall on a three-star team. Uh, Norwich, three and a half stars. Okay, they might be uh, another team that we're going to have to keep an eye on. But that's all the teams here in the championship. I think we're in with a chance of, uh, you know, finishing mid to top. I think we should make a good press if we can do some good work in the transfer window. Right, let's take a look at our board objectives. Youth development is a carryover from the last season. Uh, they want us to play at least one player from the Youth Academy sign in the first season for at least 50%. Uh, we've got 31 eligible. I'm sure we can get that done. Brand exposure within three seasons increased the ticket holders with at least 10% of the stadium's capacity. One season remaining. Well, I don't think we're going to get there. No continental. Domestically, gain automatic promotion. Okay, that's interesting, but it is a low uh, priority, so we don't have to fully concentrate on that, but obviously the board is looking for something. And financially, within three seasons, increase the club worth by 100%. Okay, well, we're going to have to see what our club's worth and see what we have to double our money or not. Right, so uh, I did spend a little bit of cash there just uh, sorting out some contracts. Um, renewing Barros, pretty much. And uh, the club is worth 30 million, so they want us to be worth 60 million within three seasons. Budget-wise, they have given us 6.3 million to play with. It's not a lot, um, considering some of the players I have been looking at. We will go and jump into that shortly. Uh, we're going to have to generate some funds here, otherwise we're not going to be able to afford any of the players that I'm hoping to bring in. Now, I've been around some of the lads we've had on this transfer list for, for a little while. Uh, some are new, so let's have a quick look through here and see what we've got uh, available to us. Uh, Tuminello is, of course, the Buffon regen that's uh, not looking very Italian. Uh, he's going to cost $23 million. I don't think there's any chance of us picking him up. You know, 80 reactions. He's a solid keeper, but, you know, nothing that is... One, going to come to the championship, and two, we cannot afford. Uh, Evangelista Santos is still here on the uh, the free agency list. Uh, his reactions are quite low, though. But, you know, if we do need a free agency keeper, there is an option there. We've got Peter Sliss, uh, 68 overall, currently at Leicester, 62 reactions. Um, he's only going to cost us a mil. Uh, Jay Lewis, one of our older prospects. One of our former players, still at Bury at 58. Uh, the Australian in Thomas Lafranich is 66 overall, currently playing for Stoke. So we might come up against him, 64 reactions. Uh, and then I found this uh, Japanese goalkeeper in Gaku Nishino. Nishino? Nishino? Uh, 67 overall, 6 foot 4. Uh, but he's already got 73 reactions, so possibly an option for us, and he's going to cost under a million, so possibly a third string keeper. I'm not too sure. Um, other than that, there hasn't really been anything out there worth having a, a proper look at. So if we're going to sign a keeper, it'll be one of these lads if we can afford them. Um, if not, I'm probably happy to roll with Cooper and, and uh, Jill through this championship season and see how they turn out, maybe address the keeper. Uh, in January if we if we are looking a bit shaky at the back. Uh, we've got the Cerna Regen still here at 69 overall. Uh, not really needing a right back, to be fair. And uh, Jesus Fabricio de Silva Senvezo, great name. Uh, I think that's the Danny Alves Regen, uh, 73 overall. Uh, cracking physicals, of course, and you would be being that Regen. 7.3 million, though, at least. Probably looking at more around 10 to try and bring him across, but... I'm not sure we really need another right back at this stage. Center backs, we've got Rafael Pereira Jr., uh, Brazilian, currently playing in Italy. Now, I've got this written down who the regen is. This is the Miranda regen. Um, I'm currently scouting him, so we don't know what his rating is, and he's only just recently joined the club. So we can't pick him up just yet, but he will be an option possibly for the future. Uh, Kristen Rishi. Now, this is a lad that I want to bring in. He's on the free agency list. He is the Chiellini Regen. He is only 5 foot 11, but uh, for money's sake, if we can get him in, he is going to be a bit of a cash cow. And, you know, he could be a very decent servant, at least in the twos for a while. Um, so once we've got through this, I think I'm going to put an offer straight in on Christian Rishi. Now, this is the man that I do want to bring in. I think this is the, um, the other Italian centre-back. Uh, what's he called? I've forgotten already. I just don't know my, my players. Um, oh, you got Chiellini, uh, Bazagli. It's the Bazagli region. Bloody idiot. Uh, Luca Girangelli. Girangelli? 
Oh, I don't know, but he is a fucking man mountain. Six foot five, high defensive work rate. The physicals are insane with 91 jumping. Uh, he is going to cost us probably our whole budget if we want to try and go after him. If we can generate some cash, probably looking at 12 to 15 million to try and bring him in at 74. But oh my days, he looks like an absolute fucking unit. And if he could partner up with Klein, I think that would have us set up for the future. Uh, Tommy Embleton there is still floating around at 56. Boyd, 61. Uh, we've also got Jeremy Conate, who's just hit 60. I don't think he's got any potential, but it's a free agency option if we need one. Uh, and then we've got Ruben Sambu. I think this is the... Um... Oh, my days. I'm just drawing absolute mind blanks. Um, 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 what's his name? He plays in the Turkish League now. Oh, I've forgotten. But uh, another 5 for 11 option. 69 overall. Only cost us... Probably $3 million. Uh, We've also got Fabio de Almeida Montero, 70 overall, 6 foot tall. Uh, some good physicals there, playing in the German League. Can't remember whose regen he would be either. You guys probably know players better than I do. Um, and then I've got this lad here, Jamie Wildick, 5 foot 10, high attacking work rate. Probably not the best, but uh, could be a cheap option at 67. No, he's just joined his club. Okay, great. Uh, Owen Griffiths there at 71. We know all about him. He's still at Olympic Lyon. Uh, right midfielder, we've got Ignacio Vincente Robles at 67 from Spain. Um, low attacking work rate, probably not going to help him, um, but fairly cheap. Sam Thomas is there at 57. Uh, can't even pronounce his first name, but Morario Alves, Portuguese lad, uh, is playing for Galatasaray. So it was obviously in the Turkish league. Four star, four star, six foot two. Could be an option, but I mean, we've got a lot of wingers at this stage. It just depends what happens in the transfer market. I've a, lot, a lot of these I've put on here in case bids come in and, you know, it might be a little bit more realistic to sell some of those lads off. We'll have to wait and see. Now, Sonny Sickman is probably someone we would want to bring in. I think this is the Rob N regen. Uh, five star skill moves, high work rates, physicals for days, 20 years of age. Uh, it's going to be expensive though, so maybe someone we can look at in the future unless we generate a shitload of cash. Uh, still got Fatamandi Fontana here, just purely for his name. Um, I can't see him coming in, I've just got in there because it's funny. Uh, Miranda, 63. Boundaries is up to a 65. Uh, we've got Alpha Perrin, who is a French striker, 67 overall, 6 foot 2. Um, pretty pacey. Probably work on everything else. What's he going to cost us? Just one and a half million. So another striking option. Now the Ibrahimovic region. This is an interesting one. 66 overall, six foot two, four star, four star. Um, he's got the physicals. I mean, he's going to be pacey as fuck. And the reason his overall is so low is because his finishing is dog shit at the moment at 56. He is only going to cost one and a half million from the Philadelphia Union. I think that is a play worth making. Um, you know, if Chimichuku doesn't come through with the goods this season. I don't know if he's ready for the Premier League either. Uh, Binhammer's still coming through. His three ratings lower, doesn't have the pace, and I actually prefer him in that center forward role. So Delphis could be an option here, um, depending what happens in this transfer window. Uh, we've also got here Harrison Roberts, uh, an English striker, four star skill moves, five foot 10. Uh, he's got good balance, and, and that could be really good for a striker. So. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. Um, now, I'm pretty sure this is the Falcao regen. I think he went to Tottenham. Uh, now he's regen and he is here at Fulham. Uh, he's only five foot nine. He's going to have some decent stats, uh, but obviously he's only just joined his club. Christian Poros Sosa is a 70 overall. He's got a shit weak foot, um, but he's got physicals, so an option if we're looking for a tall one. Uh, Enrique Lopez Perez is in the, the Japanese league. Um, what's he going to cost us? Two million if we want. Six foot seven, decent pace. Uh, I think this is. Is it the Manzukic region? Croatian? Atletico? Three star, three star. Only five foot nine. We're scouting him, but obviously he's only just joined his club. And uh, Or this could be. I'm not too sure, but five star skill moves, four star weak foot. 5 foot 10 with high work rates, more my kind of striker. We'll have to wait and see. I know, how do you even pronounce his last name? How does that little S with the V verse, Yattlers? I'm not too sure, but that is my list. So my key targets are probably Delphis, because I think we do need some more strike force. We didn't score a lot of goals there in the second half of the season. 
Uh, but I definitely want to see if we can pick up the big centre back uh, in Girin Jelly. I think I think that's a big pick, and I think we will go straight here in for Christian Rishi. Right, so just like that, I do get the job done. Rishi is actually a 70 overall already. 85 strength, 82 sprint speed, 88 jumping. He's two grand a week. You know, that's probably worth it. That's fine. Um, he only asked for a rotation roll as well. So he's going to come and slot straight in to this uh, uh, reserves team. And we'll swap him out. Cartier, see you later. And I think the captaincy... Uh, I don't know. We'll sort that out once the transfer window is finished. Right, of course, we do have the preseason tournament. I'm not really fussed about, uh, obviously, playing these games. We're just looking for cash. Uh, so I'm just going to throw them straight in the deep end. They're all four-and-a-half-star competitions, but 4.1 million available here for the European International Cup. Let's see if we can, you know, get through a few of these games and, and maybe generate some more cash for the club. Right, it is the final scout report from Finland. There's two lads we're going to bring into our academy. Doesn't have the potential, but he's got a decent overall at only 15. It's Arno Aro, 68 to 86, and also Sampo Salo, 71 to 94. We are in Northern Ireland. It hasn't really brought us back anything, but Brendan McAvoy is the pick of the crop. 57 to 71 overall already, a potential of only 67 to 85. I'm going to bring him into the academy. We'll take a look at him. If he's not much chop, we can always get rid of him. And finally, we are here in Sweden. Magnus Persson, 71 to 87. Isn't going to make the cut. He was the pick of the crop, but uh, that is it. We are done in Sweden. Now, I was contemplating upgrading the scouts again, but we don't really have a lot of cash. I want to chase some big players here for this championship season. Um, they're bringing back enough talent, not probably the cream of the crop. Uh, I mean, probably championship quality youth academy players, to be fair, but... Um, we'll continue with this. If we, if we do have a, a plethora of money later uh, in the season, we will go ahead and upgrade. But let's send these scouts out. Uh, if you want to write some new countries down below in this episode, please do. And put thumbs up on any of the countries that you do think we're scouting. Of course, the ones with the most thumbs up generally get the call up. So let's jump into this one. It's JB3 Sports Gaming. Uh, 30 thumbs up for Algeria for Physically Strong. Right, the next one here. I'm pretty sure it's Omar. You didn't put your name on this one, but I think you've had some before. Um, forgive me if I did get that wrong, but you've asked for Colombia for a playmaker. 20 thumbs up. Off we go. And the final one here is from Francisco Rodriguez, who wants us to scout Mexico for goalkeepers. Uh, that's probably a fair shout, because uh, we might need one. Let's go. All right, so straight off, we get a loan offer in for Lance Murphy. Uh, I'm going to accept that. And the board have given us a little bit of a, an increase here. Uh, our total transfer budget is now eight million, apparently, including wages. So it's our first preseason tournament game. We are hosting Ampli a five-nil victory. Are you fucking serious? Okay, we'll take that. Right, we've got a transfer offer in here for Brantiano. Now, uh, I know there was a player upgrade for him. I was going to wait till the end of the transfer window just to uh, see what happens with some of these young lads. 700 grand. Let's see what the evaluation is looking like. He's only valued at 575. It's probably a good option to cash in here. He doesn't actually have a potential. Um, so, let's uh, delegate this one. See if we can pinch them for a little bit more money. Uh, I'm just going to bump this one up to 800 grand. That's that's fair. So training-wise, I've got Ko, Binhammer, Awazi, and Griffiths in here at the moment. Uh, trying to get Griffiths to 75. Help Awazi out in the reserves team. Ko there hits a 70. Let's hope he stays there. Transfer on here for Liam Roberts. Real Salt Lake want a piece of him for 960. And uh, his valuation's only 800 grand. I mean, it's probably good to cash in here, but I'm going to do another delegation. 1.4, um, let's change that. Let's try and get a, at least a million for him. See if they're willing to play hardball. Right, St. Mirren are in for Tone for 190 grand. Probably his time is up here at the club. I'm gonna accept that offer. And they've come in with 850 for Bratiano. Uh, I'm gonna accept that offer as well. Right, we're sending out the second game of the preseason. It's Oldham and Konyaspor. Harris gets the goal and it's a 2-1 victory. Cartier off the bench for a goal. Right, we've got a bigger offer in here for Nick Harris, and Anderlicht want a piece of him. Eight and a half million valuation, they've put 10.4 on the table, and this will probably go a long way to us uh, bringing in that centre back. I'm still going to delegate and see if we can pinch a bit more cash uh, and see what happens there. Um, and they have agreed 800, no, just over a million for Liam Roberts from Real Salt Lake. Yeah, sure. And Lance Murphy has been loaned out. He will be gone for a season. 
All right, Oldham and Rayo Vallecano in the third game of the preseason. Klein gets a goal. Oh my days, the first team's on four. Form, 4-1. Four, Training session time, Binhammer up to a 64. Right, Tonev has been sold for 190 grand. Bratianu has been sold for 850. We've got a transfer offer in here for Cesar, 720. He's only valued at 650, so we're making some cash here from the Chinese side. They've got cash to burn, so let's delegate this and try and get a bit more coin out of it. And we pick up an extra 1.1 million for getting through to the semi-finals. All right, now we're gonna play some hardball here. Uh, it's a big offer in for Alfie Lee, 17 million from Jen. Now, how much more? He's only valued at 12 and a half, but his market value could be between 20 and 30 million. Now, Alfie Lee is someone that I don't really wanna see the leave from the club. He's English, could you see him moving across to Belgium? I'm trying to justify keeping him here. Um, can't get rid of our first team squad depth just yet. We've only just hit the championship. Oh, but I mean, we could make some big plays if we can get some decent cash in. Oh, I could ruffle a few feathers here. I'm going to delegate. And we're going to say if they're willing to pay 40 million for Lee, we'll have a, we'll have a little bit of a chat. Now, Anderlecht have come in with 11.6 million for Nick Harris. That's th that's more than three million above his evaluation. <sighs> He's only really playing in the reserves team. He is coming off the bench, but oh, this money would definitely help us out. And I think, unfortunately, if he can get the job done, I'm going to accept this offer from Andalix. Nick Harris, thank you for your services. Hopefully, you can sort a contract out, and um, we can cash in. Got a loan offer in for Ernst Lena. He's only just come back from loan, but. Uh, Probably worth sending him out again at only 61, so uh, let's accept that offer. All right, semi-finals of the preseason tournament. We've got Spell, and we are at home. And fuck me, we are scoring goals 4-0 again. Liam Roberts has been sold. He has gone for 1 million. And an agreement here for Caesar for 970. Uh, yeah, that's worth it. See you later. That's a bit of a cash cow that we just checked out. Uh, and we've also picked up another 1.3 million into the final. Well, they're considered 40 million too high for Elfie Lee. I think he's probably worth about that much, don't you? Right, here we go. We knew it was coming. Deportivo have shown interest in Guerin, 15.6 million. That is not enough for Guerin. Um, it is a lot more than his uh, valuation, but I think he is, you know, he's a golden boot winner. He's won the Majestico twice. He is our leader from the front, the Camembert assassin. Uh, Deportivo. Well, I think, you know, it, it's, is it plausible? Would he travel to Spain to play for Deportivo? Or would he want to stick it out? Let's do a delegation. Let's throw some big money on the table because we're going to need a big striker if he does go. And see if anyone is willing to pay, play hardball. And we've also got a, an offer in here for Oliver Millet, who's just come back from loan. Um, US Orleans Laurent Football. 340 grand, it's only just above his evaluation. He actually doesn't have a potential. Um, so it might be time to move on our number 10. Uh, but I am gonna delegate this and see if we can, you know, pinch a few extra pennies. Right, Ernst Lennart has gone on a one-year deal to Delfenza. Nick Harris, thank you for your services. He has gone for 11.6 million. That's gonna allow us to make some moves here in the transfer window. A loan offer for Guerin, that's not fucking happening. So we'll just immediately reject that. And uh, what else have we got here? Just a press conference, boring. Right, so the sale of Harris is really to bring in some players. We've got 18 million. I want to go after and Jelly. He is the first pickup that I want to try and get. So let's see if we can get a deal done. Uh, all right, Dylan Owens just played a bit of hardball. And uh, we've got Garen Jelly for seven and a half million. So let's see if we can get him a contract. Well, we get our man, is it Giron Jelly or Giron Jelly? I'm not too sure. I'll have to check out the Google Translate. But this is a man that I really wanted to bring in. Uh, six foot five, high defensive work rate. He's going to come straight into the first team. I don't even care. Noah White, you're going to the bench, mate. Uh, so welcome to the club. He's costing us a fair bit of cheddar, $30,000 a season. Compared to everyone else, that is uh, a lot of money. But, uh, you know... We've signed him on a three-year deal, so he's going to stay on that low wage once we get up to the Premier and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but a, a good investment for the future. So, um, all right, game on, fuckers. Right, we've got Las Palmas here in the uh, the final of the European International Cup, 
And Girin Jelly gets his debut here, number 19. Las Palmas takes the lead early. And we go down 5 4 on penalties. Right, let's keep training. Griffiths there up to a 74. Right, Cesar's been sold for 970, and we've got a deal in here for Miller at 380. I think we're just going to have to take the money and run here. Thank you for your services. The Bulldog is gone. Right, Awazi did hit 60, so I wanted to check in. He's only got showing great potential. I thought it would have been a lot higher, so probably some good purchases there with those two centre-back regents. Uh, we do have a lot of centre-backs here now. We'll try probably to offload Cartier uh, if we can and um, use Awazi as our fifth string centre back. Yep, good, Guerin stay. Right, we're getting all these loan offers in for Guerin. That can uh, just piss off. And uh, a loan offer for Brett Cooper. Um, we probably need him as a reserve player at the moment. Our squad's getting a little bit thin. So I'm gonna say no on that at this stage as well. Right, we've got a transfer offer in here for Rene Vimmer. Um, yeah. I don't think he's got a potential either, to be fair. Valued at 575. They've come in with 640. I'll just delegate, try and get a bit extra coin and see if we can move on this Austrian lad. Right, we've got a transfer offer in here for Noah White. Uh, I'm not going to let him go just yet. That probably doesn't seem like a, a realistic transfer anyway. And Vimar, 575. They're coming with 660. I'm going to accept that offer. And Millet has made his move. 380 into the kitty. Right, I've taken Awazi off and put in Giran Jelly in to this uh, training. Let's turn him into a man mountain. Him and Klein partnering up. Oh, mate, I am just waiting. Bang, 75. Right, we get a transfer offer in here for Cartier from Wurzburg, 340. And it's above his valuation. He served his time here well. And we'll say thank you very much and accept that offer. Right, we've got an offer in here for Murad El Masri. But uh, we're getting a little bit thin on our squad depth. Uh, they've put 820 grand on the table for him. It is above his evaluation. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to answer the question. We'll see what else happens here in the transfer window before we decide on Murad El Masri. Right, Vimat has been sold, 660, and we're getting short on players. And we get another transfer offer in here. El Masri is in uh, hot demand, 880 there on the board. We'll just keep holding those. Right, there has been so much transfer action, but it's time to get into the first game of the season. Portsmouth won the playoff, and they have come up, and we get them on the opening day. But we are travelling to Fratton Park. Kieran Jelly gets his debut here, uh, the only fresh face into this starting lineup. But uh, let's hope that we can start off with a bang against a team that has come up underneath us. We want a bit more... Uh Ah, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Bit of a rivalry after they beat us in the final game last season. Let's get into this game. Right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Opening day of the championship season. It's Oldham Athletic travelling to Portsmouth. And, well, they beat us in the final game last season. We see them on day one, and we'll want to get something going here. Debut for the big Italian to partner up with Klein. His partner in Klein. <laughs> Oh, dear me. But uh, hopefully the big man Mountain that we've brought in, only paid seven and a half million for him, but he's on a lot of wages. He's going to have to do a bloody job here or we'll be shipping him out in January. Um, let's see what we can do here. Let's see if Guerin can start off with a bank, fresh off a, another Majestico victory. You can see Kieran Jelly there next to Cooper, and he looks fucking huge. So let's go, boys. It's championship football time. Oh, it is a corner here for Portsmouth, but we've got the tall timber now. And Klein is the man to get up. Nail up, pulls the trigger, and puts it wide. And from Olsen. And it's Bernard. He sets something up here, lays it off. Alfie Lee plays it off, finds Edwards. Cuts back nicely, plays it off. Bernard slips one through, finds Cameron Griffiths. And that is a lovely goal. Cameron with the first goal of the championship. Just turned, burned and delivered. It's 1-0 to Oldham here on the road. And that is the start we've been looking for here in the championship. We want to be contenders. We want to push for a Premier League. You get to the championship, you get that little sniff of hope. And here we go, starting off our season perfectly. Laurent Bernard with the assist. And it's a lovely little finish there from Cameron Griffiths. 1-0 to the Laddix. Oh, lovely. Just turned, just, just got out the pitching wedge. Get in. Oh, there's Guerin getting involved now. He wants a touch of this football. Plays it forward now for Joel Edwards. He's got Cameron Griffiths getting into a position. Drives it forward. Cameron Griffiths, he's got two. Oh, my days. The older lads have woken up here. Cameron 
Griffiths has two. And gets in my shot. Well, there's been calls to transfer list him, get him out of the club, but the leading assist getter is the leading goal scorer so far this season. We've been training his attacking positioning and it looks like it's worked there. He's got into a rather luscious spot and puts it past the keeper to make it 2-0 to the Laddox here on the opening day of this season. Bang. Fuck you. McGee. It's a free kick here for Portsmouth. They're licking their wounds at the moment. Two goals in three minutes. And there they come and bang oh, off the sidebar and their luck is not with them. Very lucky there. Olsen plays out, finds Co off here for Laurent Bernard. He'll try and thread one through, does find Cameron Griffiths. Pushes forward, Cameron Griffiths. He's got Guerin inside. It was a poor pass, but Bernard recovers, finds Elfie Lee. Tries to turn his man, brings it back inside. Cameron Griffiths! I think the keeper this time looking for a hat trick. Not the back door, and here is Joel Edwards. Flies back inside for Guerin! Oh! Get in, Guerin! There we go! And he finds himself a goal! Starts his season off just as expected. 3 0 to Oldham. And Portsmouth, they're wondering why they came up to the championship. Well, Guerin probably needed a couple of goals. He was pretty quiet there to the end of the last season. But just swoops in like a seagull on a hot chip, beats off the defender and smashes it home. It's 3 0 in the first half. And Oldham putting a stamp here in game one. A force to be reckoned with. Klein, big man. Oh my days, it was an absolute bullet, but he was offside. Barros worked him into an offside position. I thought we'd just been fingered. Barros just cuts back at the last second, catches his man offside. And very lucky going into the halftime break. Warren Bernard will be the man to bring it inside. The big tall timbers are in there. Oh! It was Co coming over the top. We've almost got like a three towers of power now with Co Klein and Gurincelli. And there we are. We've stamped ourselves here on the championship in the first half. It's 3 0. Lee. There is Guerin. Lays it off. Joel Edwards. Oh, a perfect finish, but he's caught offside. Right, two changes here for Oldham. It's Tommy Martin and Gavis checking in for Edwards and Alfie Lee. Alfie Lee getting tired here. He's done a lot of running. I'll have to work on his stamina. We've got the corner and it is Gabrich to deliver. He's got some tall targets here in the box. Drives forward. Oh, come on! Get in! Oh, three towers of power. You just fucking love it, but you hate this fucking camera angle because we're not going to see it properly. Coe just comes through like a bull in a china shop. And bangs it home. There's no stopping us now. We've got three massive units set up for set pieces. 4-0 Oldham on a cracking start to the season and goes and celebrates with the travelling fans. Oh, no. We lose our clean sheet. Portsmouth finally put one in in the 81st minute. It was a cracking ball inside. Barris got dropped behind play and couldn't get back to cover his man. You can see him there on the floor. Kieran Jelly had two to deal with. Gabrich didn't really go out to help him out. Klein caught behind. And it's a good cross in. 4-1. Hits it on the volley. Come on, Cooper. You're going to have to fucking step up now. This is the championship, mate. Where's Tommy Martin? Can he set something up here? Lays it inside. Cameron Griffiths. Oh, they're looking for him. They're trying to help the lad out. Fires one through, Bernard pushes on. Oh, oh, unlucky. Cameron Griffiths looking for it, but can't find it. Probably find his car keys first, but there it is. What a way to stamp yourself into the championship. A 4-1 victory over Portsmouth on the road. 11 shots to five, nine on target. We were on point. Joel Edwards with two assists gets a perfect 10 with three key passes. 7-4 there for Alfie Lee. A 7 for Cooper. Didn't have too much to do. Barros a 7-4. Gurangeli 7-6 on debut with three intercepts. An 8 for Klein. Six intercepts and a tackle. Brilliant work from the big defender. Olsen gets a 7.8. Gabrich checks in for an assist and an 8.1, an 8.7 for Coe with a lovely goal. Uh, a 7 there for Tommy Martin, 9.4 for Cameron Griffiths with two goals, a 9.3 for Bernard with the assist, 8.4 for Guerin with a goal. Um, big game, 
Get voting up in the eye for your player of the match. It's the Majestico season number four. Right, we've got ourselves a youth squad monthly report. We're into the second month of the season. Ono Aro 64 to 80. Had the overall, but doesn't have the potential, so we'll get rid of him straight away. Uh, Zaki El Hindi was still holding on, 279 to 89. Godwin and Banner, 55 overall, 86 to 92. Possibly an option to bring in. Ian Boy, 62 overall, 81 to 87. Bury, 83 to 89. Isn't really growing as we would like. Brendan McAvoy, 60 overall winger, 67 to 81. Oh, sorry, mate, you're not going to make the cut either. Uh, Nicholas Carlson, the right back, who's still got high hopes for him at 81 to 94, only 15 years of age. And Sampo Salo, 57 overall, 71 to 91, will hold for now. Cartier has been sold. Thank you for your services. 340 grand into our budget. All right, time for another training session. Kieran Jolly's gone back to 74. Of course, he has been hammer now. 65. Let's see if he stays there. First scout report is back from Algeria. We've got Fatty Selmy, 74 to 94, six foot five at 15 years of age. We'll continue to monitor his progress. We are in Colombia, and the pick of the crop is Augustin Diaz, 66 to 90. We'll monitor further. And we are in Mexico looking for goalkeepers. We've got Virgilio Oliveira, the pick of the crop, 70 to 94 at this stage. Uh, we'll monitor him to see how his potential develops. Now we get a transfer offer in here for Elliot Cooper. Uh, he is our starting keeper. Jill is nipping at his heels though. Sheffield Wednesday are in the championship. They want to pay five million for him. Now uh, he's valued at 3.7. Do we really want to be selling Cooper to uh, one of our competitors? Probably not. Um, so at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and reject that offer. Right, I think it's time to spend some cash here. We've got a little bit to play with, and I think this is too too good of an opportunity to uh, to miss out on. Picking up the Ibrahimovic regen for maybe under two million uh, is is a solid investment for the future, even if he uh, you know doesn't turn into a first team player um, because we're you know we've got Guerin and that there at the moment, and you know we've put our trust in them. But to pick up you know this kind of regen this cheap would be very good business here for Oldham. So let's see if we can bring him across. 1.2 million for Delphis, which is the Ibrahimovic region. That is ridiculous. Let's uh, let's get this done um, because it is a solid investment for this club. All right, Delphis has been signed. That is an absolute steal. Uh, 66 overall, only needed two grand a week. Um, you know, his pace. He's just pure pace at the moment. Four star, four star, six foot tall. You can't ask for a better region than that for, for Imri Hibrovic, really. Um, he will grow, and if he'll either be a top player at the club or we will cash in uh, when required. Right, we've got an offer in here for Alfie Lee from Malaga, and uh, we are that thin on squad depth. Uh, I'm not really going to be looking at selling off any more of our big stars, so uh, we'll reject that offer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get another game into this episode. We're at Boundary Park, our first home game of the championship, and we're hosting Wigan Athletic. Barros is now at a 78. Let's get into this game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, game two of the season, our first home game of the championship. We're hosting Wigan, and uh, we've been very, very active in the transfer window, only bringing in one big key target, but we're uh, starting to strengthen that reserves team as well. So uh, Gunjeli will get his first appearance here in front of the home fans. Had a pretty good start to his career here at Oldham. And uh, let's hope that we can get the biscuits. Two for two would be outstanding after dominating Portsmouth. This should be a bit of a tougher task taking on one of these championship sides. Let's get into this game. Bernard. Collins Guerin. Collins Bernard lays it through. Cameron Griffiths gets the touch and whoa, Cameron. Set up on a silver platter and uh, absolutely choked it. Good from Alfie Lee. It's Bernard. Play forward. Cameron Griffiths finds the opening. It's Cameron Griffiths. Oh, sidebar. Alfie Lee drives forward. Oh, geez. Garagello was trying the bicycle. Oh, come on! You're having a laugh as if you're going to out-fucking muscle Klein. Well, Wigan have looked like a bigger team today. And they get themselves a goal in 30 minutes here on our home deck. Oh, jeez. How did he get over Klein? I mean, it was just so well-weighted. Klein left, but it was late. It Cooper. Mm, cracks starting to appear. 
the fuck did he even finish that? Cooper. No, you're not saving that, mate. 1 0. Long ball. Garagelli. The man knows how to rise. There is Guerin. Fires it out wide. Edwards gets a touch. It's a poor one, but he runs through like an absolute truck. Let's go, Jolski. Come back inside. Oh, ref! Well, we get the throw, and it wasn't a free kick. Oh, that is a poor throw from Joel Edwards. Coe gets the touch on. Bernard flicks inside, finds Guerin, pulls the trigger. Oh, great save by the keeper on the cusp of half time. It is a corner here for Oldham. Bernard to deliver. High ball over the back. Who's getting out there? It's Klein. Has he got delivery in him? Let's have a look. Drives to the back stick. Joel Edwards can't get there. And that's probably the whistle. And then half time, a 1 0 down to Wigan. That's the run. Alfie Lee. Guerin! Oh, Jones. Oh, Alfie Lee misses the challenge. And they come inside. Hey, oh, great save from Cooper. Wigan putting on a lot of pressure. Three changes here for Oldham. Chimichuku, Martin and Gabbage check in for Edwards, Bernard and Alfie Lee. Guerin goes to the wing. Here is Chimichuku. He's got fresh legs. He slips it out wide here for Tommy Martin. He pushes forward. Cameron Griffiths is working hard. Tommy Martin drives back, finds Chimichuku, who just had no control there. He's got to really fight for his spot now because we have signed Delphist. Binhammer is clipping at his heels as well. Cameron Griffiths tries to slip one through. He does find Guerin. Drive to the back stick. Chimichuku. Oh, Chimmers, come on, son. Well, it's a 1 0 loss to Wigan. And it just shows us the competition because uh, they were very strong today. Well, seven shots to six, 61% possession there for Wigan. We just couldn't get our feet on the football. Uh, let's have a look here. Alfie Lee with a 7.4. 7-1 for Cooper with six saves. 6-6 six, six for Barros. 7-2 for Girangeli. 7-1 uh, for Klein. A 6-7 for Olsen. 6-1 for Gabrich. 7-2 for Coe with four defensive efforts. 6-8 for Guerin. Just the two shots for him today. Cameron Griffiths, a 6.6. .6. A 7 for Tommy Martin, who checked in. Chimichoku, 5.9. Joel Edwards, 6-7. Seven. A 7 for Laurent Bernard. Uh, get voting up in the eye for your player of the match. Right, we've got a training session here. Trying to get those boys back up to 75. Right, and that's probably long enough. There's been a lot of transfer action in this one, but let's get the player upgrades underway. Uh, Kieran Jelly. Kieran Jelly. Kieran Jelly. Yeah, Mr. Jelly himself. I don't know. He's a fucking man mountain, but... Uh, we need a number and a, and a kit change up for him, so get that down in the comment section down below. Chuck a thumbs up on anything that you think will suit the big Italian centre-back, and uh, we'll get that one upgraded for you in a future episode. Good luck. Right, and that is where we will finish today's episode. Just the two games, but a lot of transfer action and everything going on. Not even sure how long this episode is. Uh, one win, one loss. He's just... 11th. We were first after the first round, but that's all changed pretty quickly. Uh, Norwich are on top. Um, so, yeah, an interesting start to the season. I'm not too sure. Uh, I think we've got still another 8 or 9 million in the kitty. So, if you think we should go and, and, and strengthen the position, do let me know in the comments section. Uh, there'll probably be a couple of episodes, you know, left of the transfer window. There's a lot of games here in August by the looks of things. Uh, we've got the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup up next against the MK Dons. So um, we'll get that underway in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in today. Make sure you get all those comments for everything we've covered today. And we'll see you in the next one. I'm Spryan DK. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. You have a good one. This video is powered by Neurotech and their product, Clarity. Now, you can jump over to their website now. Use the discount code DK10 for 10% off your next purchase. And uh, I highly recommend this product. I use it every single day. It increases your energy, your focus, while reducing fatigue and stress. If you want to know how I get out all these videos and keep that work going, this is the product for you. So go and check it out. All the information that you need is on that website. If you feel like making a purchase, chuck in at that discount code for 10% off. Now, if you are looking for more fresh content to check out, you can click one of these two videos. If you feel like subscribing, well, there's a button right there. Make sure you put on that notifications bell, and we'll see you next time.